Physics Penguin. Hello and welcome to Physics Penguin's Guide to Acceleration. This week we will be simply looking at acceleration and how to calculate it. So let's start with the basics. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. If velocity changes suddenly, that's a big acceleration. Notice that we are talking about vectors here. Velocity is speed in a particular direction. A car going around a roundabout can move at a steady speed, but it is changing direction and therefore changing velocity. Changing velocity means the car is accelerating, so you are actually accelerating every time you turn a corner. Acceleration is very important because whenever there is an acceleration, you need a force, but we'll look at this more in future weeks. The basic formula for acceleration is easy and everyone needs it, but higher level students have a harder formula they have to be able to use too. So the basic formula is simple. Acceleration is the change in speed divided by the time taken to change. This is written like this. A equals delta V divided by T. A stands for acceleration in these odd units, meters per second per second, or meters per second squared. Delta V, the triangle is a capital letter delta in the Greek alphabet, it means change in. So delta V means the change in velocity. This can be positive if the velocity gets bigger, or negative if it gets smaller. This is measured in meters per second. Time is just T and it's in seconds. Let's have a go. If a walrus is sliding on ice at 10 meters per second, but slows to a halt in 5 seconds, what's its acceleration? So first of all, work out delta V, the change in velocity. Walter was traveling at 10 meters per second at the start, but his final speed is zero, because he is halted. From 10 to zero is a change of minus 10 meters per second. Now, divide the change in velocity by the time taken to change. This was 5 seconds. So we have minus 10 divided by 5, which makes minus 2 meters per second per second. So the walrus has an acceleration of minus 2 meters per second per second. Negative accelerations are often called deceleration. So you could just say the walrus decelerates at 2 meters per second per second, but either is fine. Now hang on there a moment. What if the same walrus at the same velocity was sliding up to a tree and hit it at a top speed five seconds after you last measured it? Well, it's the same change in velocity and the same time interval. So you would calculate the same deceleration, wouldn't you? Well, is it? Well, no, it isn't. If the walrus hit the tree at 10 meters per second and immediately stopped, the time interval becomes zero. It takes no time to stop. So minus 10 divided by zero equals an error message on your calculator, or in fact, infinity. The acceleration is infinite. Now that would be messy. In reality, it would take a short amount of time while Walter makes a walrus-shaped dent in the tree. So let's say 0.1 seconds. So we'd use minus 10 divided by 0.1 equals minus 100 meters per second per second. Not infinity, but still a very big answer. Remember, big accelerations mean a big force. So this is why high-speed accidents are bad. So what about that harder formula? If you're doing higher tier work, have a look at this. If not, you could skip to the questions. The rest of us can have a look at one of the SUVAT equations. 
I'll do an additional video on these at some point, but for now let's just look at how to bring distance travelled into acceleration calculations. Our new formula is v squared minus u squared equals 2as. Let's go through each term. v squared is final velocity squared, velocity times itself, and v is in meters per second. u squared is the starting velocity squared, also meters per second. 2 is a whole number between 1 and 3. A is the acceleration in meters per second per second and S is the displacement in meters. Let's use this with an Olympic runner. Imagine if you ran a 100 meter race, you are accelerating all the way through the race and reach 20 meters per second as you cross the line. What is your acceleration? Well, v squared minus u squared equals 2as, so a equals v squared minus u squared divided by 2s. This makes 20 squared minus 0 squared. You can't really move until the race starts, which is just 400. Now divide by 2 times the displacement, which is 200 meters. Your acceleration will be 400 divided by 200, which is 2 meters per second per second. This sounds really low, but if you think about it, after 10 seconds, you'd actually be doing 20 meters per second. And at that velocity, it would only take 5 seconds to run 100 meters. The world record time for that is just under 10 seconds. So I think it's time to try the questions. Have a go at the worksheet below and then mark your answers using the final section after this, where I go through everything. Pause the video and have a go. Welcome back. Let's get into those questions. Question 1 asks for the unit of acceleration. This always catches people out. It's meters per second per second, but it can be written in these three ways. Question 2 wants the simple acceleration formula A equals delta V divided by T. We have delta V, 10 meters per second, and the time 5 seconds, so just do 10 divided by 5 equals 2 meters per second per second. Question 3. We need to spot which things are accelerating. If it changes speed or just changes direction, then it is accelerating. This means that A, the Earth in orbit around the Sun, is accelerating because it's in a circular path and is always changing direction. Likewise, B, the Moon, will be doing the same. Cars at a fixed speed on a straight road, though, will not be accelerating. Finally, the child on a roundabout is accelerating because they are changing direction as they spin. Question 4. The ubiquitous table. Line 1 wants the change in velocity from 0 to 20 metres per second. So that's 20 metres per second and the acceleration, which is the change in velocity divided by time, or 20 divided by 5, equals 4 meters per second per second. Line 2 wants the final velocity if you started at 60 meters per second and changed by minus 20 meters per second. 60 minus 20 equals 40 meters per second. And the acceleration is minus 20, the change, divided by 20, the time. And that equals 1 meter per second per second, but it's negative because we started with minus 20, the thing's getting slower. Line 3 wants final velocity if you start from 0 and increase by 9 meters per second. So 0 plus 9, uh, well that's 9 meters per second. We also need the time from acceleration and velocity changed. A equals delta V divided by T, so T equals delta V divided by A equals 9 divided by 3 equals 3 seconds. Line 4 wants delta V starting at 100 and finishing at 110, so that's just gone up by 10 meters per second. We also need time, so 10 divided by 2 
equals 5 seconds this time. And finally, line 5, once the starting velocity, if we change by minus 50 to get to zero. Well, this is a bit trickier, but it must be 50 meters per second, because 50 take away 50 equals zero. That means the acceleration will be 50 divided by 10 seconds equals 5 meters per second per second. And that's it. Well done if you got all that done. If you aren't there yet, go back and check the first part again. As usual, subscribe to stay updated with videos. Stay safe, and this is Physics Penguin saying ta-ta. Physics Penguin.